Hey yo, check one two. This is Flavor Flav in the building. Welcome back to the Flavor Flav show, everybody. The original podcast. Hey yo, check this out. Honestly, excitement is in the building. I'm excited right now, man, to bring y'all my next guest, man, to my stage, man, to my show. Let me tell you something a little bit, something about my guest, you know what I'm saying? My brother right here that I'm about to bring through my door, definitely, first of all, was part of the hit group NWA from way back in the days. He was part of my boy, the legendary Easy e Dr. Dre, you know what I'm saying, the whole nine. My man broke off and went solo. Solo, you know what I'm saying, and not only that, but I got the pleasure, man. You know what I'm saying, of even working with this brother, man, on his first solo album called America's Most Wanted. You know what I'm saying? So guess what? My man is doing crazy, big, big, big things now. You know what I'm saying? Movies, basketball leagues, all that. Hey, check this out. Without no further ado, because I can't wait, just like you. I want to introduce everybody right now to my show, the one, the only, the legendary Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Cube. What's happening, baby? <laughs> hey, good to see Cube. you. Cube. Always, always. I got Ice Cube, baby. Ice Cube, everybody in the building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Q? Thank you. Thank you for coming by my spot, man, and blessing me, bro. I'll do anything for you. Man, you know I would do anything for you. Word up, G. Come on, have a seat right there, man. Let's let's sit down and chop it up, man. (laughs) Got Ice Cube in my spot. Yo, I can't pull this off like Flav. Can't nobody do like Flav. Just remember that. Word up, G. Hey, yo, check one, two, everybody. Yeah, boy. I had to give it to y'all real long because I'm excited right now, man. I got my man, the legendary Ice Cube in the building. Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, family? I'm feeling good, man. You know, we just finished a great season with the big three. You know, you was out there in the Bahamas. Yes, I was. Hey, Appreciate hey, you hey, coming hey, through. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You like my hat? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that <laughs> trilogy championship. You know what I mean? 2021. Hey, let me tell you something, man. I had a great time over there in the Bahamas, Good. man. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, I had to come all the way over there to support you, my dude. You Amen. know what I'm saying? Because, we appreciate it. Because cause I watched your growth through the years, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I remember back in the days, man, when we were all out on tour together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Us, Public Enemy. Y'all, N.W.A. Yeah. We had uh, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince out there with us. Yep. Uh, Slick Rick was out on the tour with us. Yep. J.J. Fad was on the tour with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, the, and, and the whole nine. And I mean, I mean, those, that, I mean, and me and Easy e man, that was my boy, man. I miss Eric. Yeah, I remember you guys used to chop it up a lot. Yeah. You know what was great? about them times was, you know, we looked at you guys as, you know, the upper echelon. You know, you guys are, you know, New York's finest. You know what I'm saying? Strong Island. Right. And we we looked up to y'all straight up. But what was cool is you guys were, y'all showed us so much love and respect. You know, we was on the come up. Y'all was already, you know, a little bit doing up. sold up, sold out arenas already, right. and so, and 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 back then, you know, it was a lot of competitive posing. You know, it was like, you know, just checking each other out, not sure, right? You know what I'm right. saying, and, and standoffish a little bit, right? You know what I mean. Some of yeah. those, some of those groups from NYC was looking at us as like locals, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all yeah. this, this LA thing. But y'all never did that. It was always love. It was always respect. 
It was always a cool conversation. That's right. And 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 that meant a lot back then uh, because we was just happy to be on the same stage. You know, because coming from L.A., it's a different flavor. You know, you always looked at like, yo, this is where we're trying to be. And right. We got to make our mark. Right. And y'all accepted us as we was making our mark. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. And, and, and a brother like me, man, I was always the type of person, man, to really just accept everybody, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I, I feel that I'm one of the people in rap music that kind of broke that racial barrier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So remember when, like, uh, the Beastie Boys first came out? Yeah. All white rap group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, because cause rap was considered black music. Without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? Beastie Boys came through first rap group, white rap group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the second one that was white that came out was Vanilla Ice. Yeah. And shit, you know what I'm saying? And the whole shit. And, and see, you know me, Cube, around those times, man, when we were out on the tour with, with the Beasties, and it was our first tour ever. And I'll never forget, man, Chuck and them used to get so mad at me because I used to go out on the Beasties stage with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They And they had this Budweiser deal, and they were slipping and sliding around and Budweiser bed the whole show. And I'm out there, public enemy, sliding around in the... <laughs> and the butt wide yeah. bear with them, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Fun. In the whole night and having fun, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I was just, you know, typically being myself because, yep. you know, I was a big fan of the Beasties too and everything, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, we love their music. But, but, but a black man being on a all white rap group stage, you know what I'm saying? Was, you know, kind of different, man, yeah. to people, you know what I'm saying? But, I was just trying to show, look, rap music is for everybody. It just ain't for one people. You know True. what I'm saying? It's for everybody, for everybody who likes music. True. It was. It's a great thing to, to see your energy. Um, I remember catching you at a show. You guys, this is before we got famous. We were still paying to get in shows. So <laughs> you guys came out here to the L.A. Sports Arena. Right. Y'all was opening up for... LL, I believe, or Houdini, somebody you guys was opening. Right, up probably LL because we was out on his on, on, on his radio tour. Yeah, and y'all came out on the stage, man. You had on all white, all white public enemy stuff, and you rocked the show. Of course, it was a show that was unbelievable. You know, just seeing y'all, seeing the S one Ws, just seeing the the presentation was just next level for us. Right, and then. Later that night, we go to the Casa. It's a club we, we usually go to, hang out, because Dre would DJ there sometime. Right, and This right. time we wasn't DJing, we was just hanging out. You was up there on the mic, and you was you would not let nobody else rhyme. You was rhyming, and somebody else would get on the mic for a minute, you'd let them rhyme for a few minutes, and then you just get the mic again and just do your shit. And I was like... <laughs> Man, I love that dude, man. You know, that dude right there is hip-hop. Right. He is hip-hop. So, you know, that spirit that you've always had, every time I see you, every time I see you around your fans, around people who just want to glimpse or just want to talk to you, you always have time. You know, you've always welcomed people, you know, uh, no matter where they rank, you know, whether they just a fan backstage, whether they somebody that's just uh, a writer or somebody that just want to be down. I would just see you treat him like family, man, and 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 hang out, you know, right. and like we're Flav. Oh, he he stayed back in, you know, back in such and such hanging out. He going to meet us at the next show. And I'm like, that's what you would expect. You know, Flav, you like, man. You you're like everybody's friend, you know what I mean. Everybody can can find comfort and joy in what you do, and that's just been a great thing. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's been a great. And thing. I ain't gonna lie, it, it, it wasn't easy establishing that. You know what I'm saying? And I had to go through a lot to establish that. But you know one thing about me, Q. I just never gave up.
what nobody had to say about <laughs> That's me. That's right. I never gave a f what no what, what anybody thought about me. You know what I'm saying? And, and people don't know, man, that this dude can play like 15 to 17 instruments. Like, that's mind-blowing, Flav. Yeah. That's mind-blowing that, I mean, that's talent on a whole nother level, man, that people don't even know about. It's nothing you brag about. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's like, it's just... It's something that I, I just always been amazed. You know, my wife would tell you, I've always been amazed. I'm like, you know, that dude right there can play like, he could damn near play everything you put down. You right. see what I'm saying? And right. it's. Um, and I play by ear. Yes. I don't know how to read no music. It's amazing, man. It's just, it's next level, dude. It's a next, it's next level genius. And people don't know that about you. You don't brag about that. Right. And that's, that's. One of the coolest things about you is most people, that would be one of the first things out their mouth. You right. see, you dig? Yeah. But it's not. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, a lot of people would use that to brag on, and they don't. And you right. don't, I mean. And, uh, right. And it's cool, man. It's cool to know that. That you do it like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, God that, is God is good, Q. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And all of those instruments that I learned how to play on my own, I say that was God teaching me. I just didn't learn it from no other human. Yeah. But God gave me the power. Uh -huh. and, and he allowed me to be able to learn how to play these instruments by air. But also that comes from Cutting all my classes, hanging out in the <laughs> band room in, in mm -hmm. junior high school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's your and, teaching. And yeah, that, yeah. That was your class. Because look what you right, do. Right, right. You're in music. So yeah. you couldn't have been. I mean, what was you going to do? Be in math class all day? or Right. You know, it's like right. God put you where you were supposed to be. Now, in school, people don't know that I had to take a typing class. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 I f***ed around. I didn't get my electives. I had to take a typing class. And I'm like, I'm not about to be no secretary. And I did that what, shit too. What the f*** am I doing here? And, but God put me there. Because, fast forward, we in there a few months. I'm actually good at this shit. You know what I'm at? I'm actually like 40 minutes, 40 words, 50 words a minute as a, as a, Ninth grader, you know what I mean? I'm starting to actually be able to do this, you know? Right, right. And so um, I'm, I'm finished my work, and my guy, Kiddo, he's in the class. He's another dude. We both looking at each other. What we doing here? You know, because right. we was just late to get our other electives. We were supposed to be doing metal shop. We were supposed to be doing electric shop, not typing. But... In that class, he's the first one. He said, Q, because we had finished our work. We was fast. He was like, Q, you ever write a rap before? No, nah, no, nah, never. He said, you write one, I write one. We'll see which one's the best. And this is it, you and that guy, Kiddo? This is me and Kiddo. This is the first time I ever attempted to write a rap. What grade were you in? I was in the ninth grade. Damn. And... I never stopped from that day. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. he put me on a path. If I wasn't in that class, if I was in a regular old other class, maybe I never would have started writing. Maybe he wouldn't have never challenged me like that, you know, and it wouldn't have never jumped off. I was a fan of hip hop. Right. But I wasn't engulfed in hip hop. I wasn't a part of it. Right. So right. that being in that class. From that day, I, I, I became a rapper. I, be, I became a part of the game. You see what I'm saying? So let me the ask music. you this. When you wrote that first rhyme. Yeah. And also. And I still got the paper, huh? I, I was going to ask you. I still got it. Can you, can you remember it? My name is Ice Cube. I want you to know I'm not Run DMC or Curtis Blow. That's the first rhyme <laughs> I ever wrote. <laughs> That's the first rhyme I ever wrote. 
Yeah, that's it. That's oh, the line. Shit. I'm gonna show you My one day. Ice Cube and I, I want, want you to know, know I'm I not in DMC and I ain't Curtis, Curtis Blow. Blow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yo, big shout out goes out to Reverend Runner DMC. Yeah, the and kings also, of rock. And my man, the legendary Curtis, Curtis Blow. Blow. Yeah. Wow. That's the original big. solo. So so what made you keep on writing after that? Did you fall in love with it? Well, Did my you, man, yeah. Is, I, is it because you knew you was good and you was like. No, nah, I, didn't, I didn't know that yet. Okay, okay. But I love the music. Yeah. And I love hip hop. And not everybody I knew was onto it as much as I was. You know, back then you had to find people that was DJing or just into the music. Most people was in the, you know, Prince and, you know what I mean? Right. The Time and all them kind of groups. And you had to find people that was into the scratching and the breaking and the dancing and the, the graffiti and the this and the that. So. Uh -huh. Luckily, my man, Sir Jinx, who lived right down the street from me, you know Jinx. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's, 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 remember, remember we're going to talk about Jinx talk about, but, but, uh, Yeah, yeah, that's my, my, he, my man. He lived down the street from me, and he was the only one I knew that was that close that was spinning on cardboard, you know, turntables. Just He was into the B-boy stuff. Right. So I start to hang with Jinx. Write raps, over you know he had the instrumentals, you know what I mean, and just right. honing my style until, yeah. you know, Dr. Dre is his cousin. So until I ain't know that. Yeah, Dr. Dre is Jinx's cousin. Wow. This is how the connection comes. Okay. Dre ended up moving into Jinx's house, so okay. I had you know a lot of access to be with Dre. Cause he was right down the street, and he and was Dre, in, he was, was in the DJ wrecking crew. Then. Yeah, he was he was a DJ in the wrecking crew. Okay, and so they were starting to make the records. Wrecking crew, yeah, man. turn off the wow. lights. They were starting to make records. Right. So Dre, I used to help him write, you know, and we start writing. He would do mixtapes <laughs> in the neighborhood. And then that's when we start doing the neighborhood shit, like talking about the hood and talking about that yeah, on his yeah. mixtapes. He used to help Dre write. Yeah. It's crazy. He wrote a few songs for Dre and uh for the wrecking crew. And so Wow. Doing those mixtapes, Easy got a hold of one of them. Okay. He bought one from the swap meet out here. And okay. He was like, Who's putting this together? And the dude, Steve Yano, the guy who used to sell the tapes, paid Dre to make them, says so Dr. Dre. And Easy was like, I know Dre. I went to I went to Compton with him. We used to DJ together. Right. So that's how Dre, Easy, me, and all started to connect back together. And then Easy was like, I want to be a manager. So he was looking for groups to manage. He had found this group. I wrote the group a song called Boys in the Hood. They didn't like it because they didn't understand the West Coast. Flavor because they was in those days, they was from you Queens. You had a group, you was, yeah, I was in a group too. Wait, wait, but you was representing a group called Boys in the Hood back no, then. No, wait, no, Easy wanted to be a manager, right? He had a group from Queens called Homeboys Only. Okay, so he said, Man, they need some material, you know, I like their voice, I don't really like what they rapping about. Right, right. So he he, I was fifteen. He paid me to write him, write this group of song. Okay. So since their name was Homeboys Only, I wrote a song called Boys in the Hood. So that's where that title comes from. So why, wow. hey, y'all better be listening to my dude. All right, <laughs> we talk we talk yeah. about knowledge from the Ice Cube College. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, man. So so Boys in the Hood, I didn't. You know, I'm not from Queens. I'm from L.A. So. It was full of L.A. lingo. Right. So they, the dudes from Queens, they didn't really understand ganking, 6 and Impala. You know, they was like, we don't know what you're talking about. We can't do this. So the song was going to go to waste. And then Dre convinced Easy to do the song. And that's what you're seeing straight out of Compton movie is Dre said, Easy, you got a good voice. Why don't you try it? 
I said, man, I'm not a rapper, man. I don't want to do this. I was like, man, try it. Just try it. We paid for the time. We, we got studio time. It's already paid for. See what you can do. And Dre worked with him for two days to get that song perfect. Wow. Yeah, that's how it went down. And then that got the ball rolling. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So 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 that's how NWA got formed too as well. Well, NWA was after Easy got rolling, he had a single out. He said, "Man, I want to do some more music like this." Um, so we did. He said, "But I want y'all, you know, y'all, you know, y'all y'all can rhyme too. I want to try to create like an all-star group." Like Is this before the record Eight Ball Junkie? This is this is right when that record was coming out at the same time. Yeah, because that's like one of my, my favorite, my yeah, old time yeah. favorites, the eight yeah. ball junkie. Yeah, man. eight ball, I, I believe that's on the other side of Boys in the Hood. Okay. But then we did Dope Man. Maybe Dope eight, Man, Dope Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did Dope Man. And uh it was like, man, let's let's form an all star group. So easy to be the center, we'll get Dre from Wrecking Crew. Right. Me, I was in a group called Stereo Crew, but we changed it to CIA, uh, Criminals in Action. Wow. Alonzo made us change it to Crew in Action. Okay. So, but anyway, I left that to, to do this, like, all-star. You know, these were, like, the dirty, hardcore rhymes that we didn't even know was going to blow. You know, these are like, right. let's just do this for the street. Right. Right. Uh, and we did it for the street. And it blew up, and we couldn't look back. It was like, we got it. We got it. It's like we in WA now. You know what I mean? It's like we in it now. We can't turn back. We can't. We can't go. I can't go back to Stereo Crew. You can't go back to Record. We in WA, and then that's just how we locked in and said, "Well, let's do a whole album. First, let's do the Easy Does It album. Then we gonna hit them with the NWA album." Man, let me tell you something, man. NWA, man. Let me tell you when NWA first hit and i mean like me i'm from new york yeah you know what i'm saying and i was i was like so he's banging <laughs> he's just banging and not only that but then also that was the um first sign of a thing that we call today gangster rap yeah you know what it, I'm it saying? was reality rap it was reality rap you know what i'm saying yeah and and, and the if media anybody, coined it if anybody rap. asked me well, Flav, what is gangster rap? I tell them, plain and simple, that's gangsters rapping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. gangster, I mean, everybody writes the way that they live their life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If gangsters live their life a certain way, they're going to write about it. No that's, doubt. You know what I'm saying? And that's what gangster rap is. You know what I'm saying? And, and I mean, the impact that y'all made, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, on, on everybody, bro. I mean, phenomenal. Phenomenal impact, man. You know what I'm saying? It, I think it, it happened because we we wasn't worried about making an impact. Right. We, we y'all was, y'all we did was, it without trying to make an impact. Yeah, y'all we just was just trying to do what was real right. and what we knew people would like. Right, and right. we was just trying to tell the truth, like how we saw it, and not sugarcoat it and just make it real as we can make it to make people understand the kind of life we was living and had to deal with in L.A. Um, so that was the essence of it. But then we, we we learned real quick, okay, this is our style. This is the kind of records that, that we should be making because everybody else kind of got every other lane covered. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So we need this need to be our niche and our lane. Right. And we thought remember back then you couldn't bite. Like That's right. That's right. You so could, you, you could, get caught biting, believe me, it you was will over. be discriminated for that yes. shit. Yes. Even a scratch. T- like yeah, do you using the same scratch that was used on you know what I mean <laughs> my man That's over right. here you can't be doing that. That's right. But That's the right, break Q. beats the break beats <laughs> kind of broke that up. Because right. everybody was waiting for the break beats, and then everybody was using the similar ones. Like, right. even if you listen to Straight Outta Compton, uh huh, we used a lot of the same break beats that was used on It Takes a Nation. 
Wow. Yeah. If you listen to the beginning of uh, The Police. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, no. That's uh, Bring the Noise. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. Bring the noises. Yo, you hit me with, you hit me with bricks right now, man. I don't know. You know what I mean? That's bring the noises. It's moving. Yeah. We just used the same right. break, but we used it and just let it lay a little bit. But it's the same, same, thing. same rhythm. Right. Um, right. And so we were, you know, that to me, it eased up everybody on you on the body like okay you can use some of the same style just use it different different be fresh in a different manner. you be fresh with it you know if you're gonna do it uh, try to be different or just as good as the last person that used it you know right. what I'm saying if right. you wanted to be recognized so right so I'm saying that to say we thought this was gonna be our niche style like us ice tea. You know, maybe, yeah, Just Ice, you know, a couple other people that was coming hard, uh, Schoolie D. Right. You know, we just figured, okay, that would be our niche. And then more and more groups started to go that route and use that style. Right, and right. A lot of other that was That was kind of disappointing it. to us because we felt like everybody, if everybody stayed in their lane, Right now, hip hop would be way more creative. Well, see, let me say something, man. You know, we all we all followed somebody without you know a doubt. What I'm saying, and you gotta expect for people to even follow us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? So, Definitely understand it. So, 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 if y'all were disappointed, that's because you guys didn't understand the impact that y'all had made, you know what I'm saying? And then the big fan base that you guys got, you know what I'm saying? And you remember this old saying back in the days, like for Michael Jordan, yo, everybody wants to be like Mike. Yeah. Remember? Yep. Come on, man. There's a lot of people that wanted to be like NWA. And I that's why, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they, that, 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 that style got embraced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's because of the impact that you brothers made. You know what I'm saying? And I mean. But we, you know, we come from that era where you, you can get you, so many Ice different tea, flavors. You know, Ice T. You know, y'all were the only ones that was really, really like putting it out there like that. You know what I'm saying? On the gangster tip and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you got all of these other groups, man, that just came behind you and Ice T. Mm -hmm. Y'all in IC, because y'all were the first ones really to, yeah. to really set that tone, Q. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And the whole shit. Um, you got to give it up to the ghetto boys, because they was got, Yeah, was the right ghetto there. boys. You know, ghetto coming boys. from the south, you know what I mean? Right there. Yeah. Hey, hey like, like, like they always say that I'm the first original hype man in rap music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The second one... I don't care what nobody say. I gotta give it to my man Bushwick Bill. God bless him. Yeah, Bushwick Bill's yeah, dope. Yeah, Bushwick Bill dope. because he. he I think y'all forgetting about one though. Everything he did, he emulate he em emulated me. I, yeah, without a doubt. And look, y'all gotta forget y'all forgetting about. <clears throat> he never said nothing, but he love. Who? E love. E love. E love that LL used to yeah. have hey, was hey, the man hey, yo, just hey, holding hey. the radio. Yep, just E love the was radio. the man. Not only <laughs> that, but he would be on the stage with LL, right? Yeah. LL on this side, E love on this side, right? Folding his arms. Yep. Then when LL comes to this side of the stage, E love goes to that this, side yeah. of the stage. Remember that? Yeah. And not yeah. only that, but check this out, Q. The public enemy target. Yes. The man that's in the middle of the target. A lot of people thought that Chuck put a policeman in the middle of that target. No, that's not a policeman. No. In the middle of that target, that's E-Love. 
That's E Love. You didn't know that, did nah, you? Nah, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, Chuck Damn. took Chuck took his picture, made it a silhouette, uh -huh. and put it in the middle of the target. Wow. So in the middle of the target, yes, that's E Love. Damn. Yeah, bro. Man, history right here, baby. <laughs> history, history right, right here, here in the making, yeah, baby. Y'all know it. Flavor Flav got Ice Cube in the building, boy. Damn. That's oh man, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm excited, bro. You That's know all what I'm good, saying? baby. It's all Cause good. Because not, not only am I a friend, but always been a fan. Always Me too. Been a, always been a fan of you, Cube. Me too. Always been one of your fans, bro. You know what I'm saying for real, man. And and I'ma always be until I take my last breath, bro. Man, you know what I'm saying. I look at you as the epitome of hip hop. Like you, you are. If I was to describe what a B boy is, I would point. And be like, <laughs> wow. Flavor flavor. That's what a B boy is. Like, you, you the definition of it, man. And that's, and that's an expression that hasn't been heard of in years B boy. A lot of people don't even know what a B boy is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For yep. real, man. But if everybody know what breakdancing is about, you know what I'm saying? And, the culture, you know, yeah, the culture, man. You know, what somebody I'm saying? My who man, just crazy legs from New York, and I mean, you know, you had a whole lot of break dances, man. Yeah. you know, back in the day and shit, you know. Yo, but let me ask you this, okay? I want to go back to where to where we was, okay? So now y'all ended up putting NWA together and everything, you know what I'm saying? And had a nice, fantastic run. What made you go solo? What made you want to go solo? Well, you know, I, I didn't necessarily want to go solo. Right. You know, I wanted to continue with the group, but I needed I needed the business to be right and to right. and to and to be transparent where you know, we knew what was going on and we wasn't just told what was going on, you know, and and that information was coming kind of sideways you know it was a lot of excuses and um you know it just it just got to a point where i couldn't trust jerry heller you know the dude i mean when somebody lie on your mama i mean lie on your mama right it, it just got lying on your mom yeah he did he did and who who was this guy and what did he say about your moms? I mean, Jerry Heller was the manager. Okay. And we was trying to get a contract. I was trying to see the contract before we signed it. Right. So I was trying to get a copy. So I had asked for a copy a few times and couldn't get it. And um, I had this lawyer uh, and he was saying... Don't tell him you got me yet, because you you probably won't ever get the contract early if wow. he knows you got a lawyer. Right. Tell right. him tell him that tell him your mom wants to see it. You 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 17, you 18. Tell him your mom wants to see it. He's gonna think she don't know what she's looking at, and he's gonna give it to you. So I said, okay. I I, I tell him that one. So I had my I had my I had my mom's calling, <laughs> right, and asked for the Ms. Doris. Yeah. yeah, G. And uh, no answer, no nothing. I asked my mother, "You call him? Yeah, I call. Talk to him. Yeah, yeah." I said, "Okay, everything." He said, "Yeah, it was." He said he was gonna send it, and then we just waiting. So I went up to him. We was on tour. I was like, "Hey, man, did my mother call you?" He said, "Yeah, she called me." I said, well, what happened? What'd she say? What, I mean, what was the conversation? He said, she cussed me out like I've never been cussed out before in my life. And I'm like, what? He said, yeah, she cussed me out like I've never been cussed out before in my life. She called me every name in the book, cube. Was that your mother's character Hell back then? no. Hell no. My mother ain't going to cuss out nobody on no business tip when right. she don't really even. I mean, we're trying to understand what's going on. She's not going to go there when we're still trying to get information. And that's how you knew right off that's the bat. That's how you knew you. Lying. This is a piece of shit. 
Yeah. And he lied on my mother because I called my mother. I said, guess what he told me? I said, what? He said, he told me that you cussed him out. And she was mad. That's when she got mad. She was like, I never said one nasty word to that man. It was a cordial conversation. He said he wow. was going to send it. And we still waiting on it. Now I want to. I would do want to call him and cuss him out. I said, no, 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 no. That's just letting up. Letting me know what we dealing with, you know. And from then on, I knew that it was some, you know, it was dirty pool, dirty pool. So you just wanted to keep yourself going, really, until the NWA business got straight. Because things wasn't really like all in place and everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, we was we wasn't under contract. Wanna, uh -huh. We wasn't under contract. We was just doing records, and we wasn't under contract. Right. And they was trying to get the contract signed late after the records were done. Right. And I said, I need to see them first, man. I'm just not gonna sign nothing, and they could they wouldn't give us an early version of it to read it give our comments, whatever. Right. They just wanted us to sign it on the day. Like, here it on is. On the day sign of it. Yeah, shit. and that's yeah. some bullshit. Now, that's that bullshit. That is, man. So, that's why I left NWA and went solo. Um, and thank God I did because I was able to come down hey, there and yo. work with the bomb squad. Hey, yo, check this out. Do our thing. I like, you know that was going to be my <laughs> next question. Yes. You know what I'm saying? What? How did you hook up with Hank and, and Keith? And, and Keith. Yeah. What Eric. made you want to choose the Bomb Squad to help you out with your first album? Well, the Bomb Squad was my favorite producers. Okay. Like, you know, Eric Sadler is a he's a, a mad scientist. Yeah. When it comes to rhythm, Eric Vietnam beats, Sadler. Yeah, yeah, and 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 cutting them samples and making them new music. Right. You know, um, and so I didn't think nobody was better than than the Bomb Squad, even though I was working with Dre at the time, you know. But, <clears throat> you know, when you're working with somebody, sometimes you're looking at other places and seeing what else is out there. And the Bomb Squad, to, to me and Ren, was like top of the line. Well, okay. what happened was, I remember you mentioned white groups. You know, you had the Beastie Boys, right. but then you had Third Base. Then you had, that's right. Third Base. Which came after Vanilla Ice. Was it after or before? I thought Third Base was before Vanilla Ice. I'm not sure. Uh, I think Vanilla Ice, Ice was, was first. I, I, I think Vanilla Ice was first, Q. Okay. Uh, but, um... You can hear the unsurety. Yeah, though, yeah, right? we both unsure. <laughs> yeah, but, you can but, hear it though. But they yeah. had a producer by the name of Sam Seven. You know that first album is is dope. Like first third bass album was crazy. Right. So I was actually I talked to Lior, Lior Coin, and I was like, "Look, man, I'm gonna be in New York. I want to meet Sam Seven. I want him to do some music on my solo shit." So he was like, "Come on out here. I have Sam come through." So I flew out there. And no Sam. I'm in Lior's office for two, three hours. No Sam. I'm like, stood me up, right? Wow. So I'm walking out, Def Jam, I'm walking out, and I see Chuck in the hallway walking towards me. I'm like, Chuck, what's up, man? He's like, yo, Q, what's happening, man? I heard you went solo. What's going on? So we all start telling him about my situation. Yeah. And he was like, you want to do some breakout shit? As a solo artist, I'm like, what you got? He said, me and Big Daddy Kane doing a record called Burn, Hollywood Burn. And you should come get on the verse. Wow. Yeah. That's how that came That's to how be. that came. So I came down there to do that. When I'm down there, Hank is there, Keith is there, and, and Chuck. And Chuck is like, tell them what you told me. And I'm telling them the story of me trying to get my solo shit done. And I told them a story that when I when I told everybody that I was coming to New York to get my record done, they laughed at me. Because they was like, you from L.A., you trying to go to New York to get a record done? What, right, what's wrong right, with you? Right, 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 right. So <laughs> they laughed at me. So when Hank heard that, he was like, they laughed at what? Why did he laugh at you? It's like they don't think. I could do good music out here because I'm an L.A. artist. 
it's going to sound like a New York record. It ain't going to sound like a my shit, you know? Right, right. It's like, yo, Q, if you want us to do that whole joint, we'll do that whole joint. And I was like, this is a dream come true. Yeah. This is a dream come true. I'm right, like, right, right. Hell yeah, I want you to do. I was just trying to get two or three tracks. Right. But if y'all right. want to do the whole thing, let's work the deal out. Yeah. Work the deal out. Man, I was there at uh 17 Franklin. I was there 710 Franklin out there in, in Long Island for about two, three weeks, man. Me and me wow. and Jinx. Me and the 510 South Franklin. Oh, yeah, 510. 5, I said 710. Yeah, 510 5, Franklin. Studio, 5, yeah. 10 South Franklin. Yeah, 510 South Franklin. We never forget it. Whole warehouse full of records. So that's where they had you come out to start working on it? Yeah. Because let me tell you, man, one of my most amazing nights, bro. I'm hanging out, hanging out, getting lit, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting lit this night, man. <laughs> hanging out with the crew, Q. <laughs> Next thing you know, I come over to Green Street Studio because that's where we, yeah. you know, was we putting it down, down at, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? And y'all were down there working on your album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you said, you had a track on. You was like, hey, yo, Flav, come on, come on, man. Get in the booth. Come get in the booth. So I'm like, oh shit, this put me on the spot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I don't really know how to rhyme that good mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. You know, for, I gotta write my shit down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And the whole shit. So you know me, Chuck, and Hank, and all of us. We always played the dozens and shit. Talk about each other's moms. Each yeah. other. We did that shit royally, Q. Yeah. You know what I'm doubt. saying in the whole nine. So um. So when I came in the booth, and I was with you, I'm like, oh shit, I'm in the booth with Ice Cube. I'm like, what the? F I'm gonna pull this shit off. I said, I better think. Quick. You better think quick, bro. <laughs> they put that. Track on, man. The next thing you know, I just thought about the snaps. Yeah. The snaps that we was doing. And I was like, two peas in the bucket. Mother, mother. mother. Yeah. I'm like, hey, yo, I did that shit. And I looked at you. You wasn't mad. I was happy. Yo. We did <laughs> I was that one I was, take. I was happy, yo, man. One, one take. One mic. One mic. We jumping in on the mic. We yep. in the booth with each other. That's we right. We let it go one time, and what we got, we got. Because That's right. you was on your way to the airport. You was on your way to the airport. You was like, I, I got to leave, Cuba. I got to go. I said, man, just come in here and say some shit. I need you on the record. <laughs> just talk some shit. You, saw, you said, okay, put on the beat. And we went in there. We put on the beat. And that's the record. And that's that's the, the record. We did it one time. You ran out there. You was like, yo, I hope that shit is dope. And you was gone. And we put it together. And the shit was bananas, man. Yo, shit was dope. Man, let me tell you. It, I it, never, it, 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 it topped the record I've off. I've never been on, put on a spot like that, bro. You were the first one that ever put me on a spot like that bro dude and i was like you came through like a champ like i, I knew had you would. to pull that shit off bro shit is dope because you wasn't it's no class. joke man you know what i'm saying and i'm like i gotta i gotta make sure that my man got some solid shit you know what i'm saying also do you remember the time Damn. remember the time you had to break up the fight with jinx with and jinx epitome, and epitome. <laughs> yeah no shit right yeah, and, and we were coming i think we were coming Street. from the from 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 our the red parrot or something and you lost your keys like Yo, you was looking for no. your keys and shit yeah i was looking for my keys and you know why i couldn't find my keys because epitome and jinx was fighting and a and epitome grabbed my whole set of keys and threw them at jinx oh yeah that's that right. night yeah. and my keys went all over the street and everything yeah. man damn q you yeah, got a I good memory that, like man. a mother <laughs> yeah i remember that damn. come on man like <laughs> Like, what's up, man? You jumped out. What's up? Why yeah. y'all doing this? Why yeah, y'all fighting? Yeah, yeah, man? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to break that family. shit up. What's going on? I had to break that shit up. They man. was fighting because uh, crazy. They was both sick of driving. Uh huh. You know, they would drive me back to the hotel, uh -huh. and it was always nowhere to park. Right. Now, you know, we get out of that Green Street. You get out two, three, four in the morning, easy. Right. And, and so 
it was always nowhere to park, so nobody wanted to be the one to drive because you always had to walk four blocks after you parked the car if you drove. Right, right. So they was right. fighting on who was going to drive me home. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they was fighting. Yeah, that was a crazy ass <laughs> night that night. I'll never forget that shit, man. That, that was yeah, a crazy ass crazy. fight night, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Funny. Yo, what um Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, man, for that moment that night for even just having me come in the booth jumping on your shit. You man, know what I'm come saying? On, man. And it's I ain't classic. gonna lie, but one of my biggest dreams, one day. When you having one of your shows, I want to come out on stage and perform that record with you, man. No problem. We could do that. Yeah, man. You know, that's about that. one of my biggest dreams to this date. To this date, man. I'll make like, it happen, man. We yeah, get that yeah, track yeah, and we yeah, do Yeah, man. Yeah, that's one of them, uh, them bucket list things. Yeah. And shit on my bucket list. I want to come out on the stage with you, and I want to do only, only out, out for, for one thing. thing. Only out for one, one thing. <laughs> so, what happened with you and Jinx, man? Why did you all? Why did you guys split apart? Well, because y'all were tighter than Batman and Robin for a minute. Yeah, I think it was a situation where, you know, we was on the road one time, and um, and an issue happened with our road manager. Okay, and Jinx and. It hurt him, man, and he was just kind of done with the whole, you know, performing. He wanted to lead the road. You know, he was yeah. just he was kind of at his wits' end. Um, so he left the tour. And then so it was Jinx that left, huh? Yeah, Jinx left the tour. We was in Toronto. And then that's when I, you know, we was kind of scrambling. I had to have T-Bone DJ for a few shows. And then I brought in DJ Crazy Tunes. I remember Dub Crazy C Tunes. Brother. But 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 was Jinx upset at you personally? I mean, why nah. did he leave you? you know, I don't. I, he, I mean, y'all y'all started this shit. I don't know exactly. It's why. like y'all started this shit. This the thanks you get? <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> well, you know, it was a situation where I don't know if he wanted to be with the crew, part of it. You know, when he left and I stayed on the road, he started working on other groups like Exhibit and, and just kind of establishing his own thing right, away right. from the lynch mob and and things like that. So, you know, it was probably a combination of things, you know. Um, right. You know, sometimes when you work together so long, so close for so many years, yeah. you just need a break. See, let me tell you, man, when I first... Um Started staying out in L.A. in 2003. I came mm -hmm. out here. And uh, I was staying with my friend Princess, mm -hmm. right? And we stayed on 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 Fairfax and Burbank. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know right down the street on Fairfax was Jinx Crib. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I learned that Jinx was on Fairfax down there, I used to always go down and see Jinx all the time and shit, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Go down there and shit, you know, chill with Jinx and everything. And one day I went down to Jinx's crib and there was this brother named Norris. Mm -hmm. He was working with Steve Harvey's Big Time Show. Remember the Big Time Show yeah. that Steve Harvey had, you know, with all yeah. kinds of circus acts and shit like that going mm -hmm. on? So he was like, yo, Flav, man, look, man, I'm an editor. For, for the Steve Harvey show, man. I want you to come to the show with me, man. Just come to the show with me, man. And, and, and just sit in the audience. They'll put you on the camera, this and that, that and this. By me being at Sir Jinx crib, meeting Norris, and I said, okay, I'll come down to the Steve Harvey big time show. I went down to the big time show queue. And I sat in the audience, man. They had me sit on the end. Yeah. Next thing you know, cameras come up rolling. And they have me on camera. Boom. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, while I'm sitting in the audience, I'm getting phone calls from people back at the crib. Yo, Flay, we see you on, on TV. We see you on the, on the Steve Harvey show. But it is now, right? Yeah. Steve Harvey comes out, man. He stops the show to say what's up to me. And he said to everybody, listen, I want y'all to know right now, if it wasn't for this man right here, 
his group Public Enemy, I would not have a show. I was like, whoa, that's deep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But by me being seen on his show is the thing that made Bernie Mac want me. Mm -hmm. So so Steve Harvey was my first appearance. Yeah. Then the Bernie, God bless him. I miss Bernie too, yeah, man. Yeah, me too. He was a good dude. The Bernie Mac show was my second show that I ever was seen on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, then, you know, I did Mad TV, then went on to do some Real Life 3 and all of that. But my thing is, none of that I don't think would have happened if I wasn't hanging out with Sir Jinx. Hey, you know. Because I had good times with Jinx. Man. Yeah, That's he's a good my dude. dude man. He's a good are dude. You, how are you guys today, man? Are y'all you know, tight now? Y'all still cool? What's going on? You know, it's family. So, you, you know, you had your ups and your downs. You know, he's mad at me, but uh, I still to love him. To this day, he's still mad at you? Yeah, you know, he's a little mad at me, but I still love him. And I know he still love you, too. Without a doubt. I don't give a fuck how mad. Just like me and Chuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know Chuck might be a little mad at me. I may be a little mad at Chuck, this business shit, but I still love him. Without a doubt, man. You know we go I'm back, saying? you know, to this, you know, to elementary school together so right you know we can't forget about that right 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 bullshit. so yo man from there then you went and you start getting into movies yeah john singleton you know what i'm peace. saying and let me tell you something man when fridays came around yeah all hell broke loose bro great creation thank you Great creation, Cube. Thank and not you. only that, but you couldn't have did it no better with having my boy Big Zeus. Yeah. Big Time. Zeus. Hey, give me back my bike, punk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Word up, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, Chris Tucker. Yeah. You just got knocked off. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yo. Let me tell you something. Friday, kind of became everybody's favorite movie, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What made you create that? Where did you? What made you? Where did you get that idea from to do that? Um, just you know, we had did the, you know, we did hardcore records, right? We did uh, movies like Boys in the Hood. You know, the movie with John Singleton. Rest right, in with peace. John Singleton. God um, bless him, man. Yeah. And then and then movies came out like Menace to Society. Right. You know, movie like uh, South Central. And it was like, damn, all these movies are kind of depressing. Like, we had more fun growing up. I don't... Something, something is not catching on how we felt growing up. Yeah. Which... Yeah, it's crazy shit happening, but we laughing, we joking, we having fun. Right. We not like these movies making us seem. Um, so I just wanted some balance. I wanted to show how much fun we had in the neighborhood tripping off of all the crazy people and shit going on in one day. Right. You know what I mean? So, I, you know, it was kind of in the spirit of my song, It Was a Good Day. It's like, yeah, we in the hood. Yeah, we dealing with, you know, crackheads stealing clothes. We dealing with <laughs> dope dealers. Right. We dealing with, you know, this, that, and the other. But we still don't, we still got a smile on our face. We still can laugh. We still can um, feel alive. Right. And not feel like we living in some war zone. And so, I wanted to tell a simple story. It's the story of this is why people love Friday. <laughs> it's it's the, kill it's it, the, GQ. Kill it's, it. It's the day. It's the day the bully gets his ass whooped, and everybody loves and remembers that day when it happens. You know, right? I mean, if it happened in school, if it happened, you know, within the neighborhood, yeah. you always remember the day. The dude that need to get it, the day he get it. The day he got it. The day he got it. So right, right. I'm with that's you. what the movie is about. You know, it's about everybody seeing the day the bully get his ass kicked. 
And so we just had fun with it and said, like, we're going to laugh about this shit instead of crying about it. Right, right. And and went with that spirit into the movie. Yo, let me tell you, man, with that movie right there, bro, you brought so much fun and so much humor, you know what I'm saying, to yeah. the movie spirit, man, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, bro, around that time, man, you know what I'm saying, you... You know, have crazy movies out and shit, yeah. man. Night of Living Dead and all that shit like yeah. that. And, you know, movies that make people cry and shit. You know what I'm saying? You came out with the happy shit. You came yeah. out with, with the fun shit. You know what I'm saying? The funny shit. And I don't know. Because I mean, we was. And the shit that you came out with is the shit that actually goes on in the hood. Yes. Every day, G. Yes. Every day. Yes. Every day. So we you wanted to be authentic. That. And real, you know, it's like we was watching in Living Color at the time. Right, right. Dope, right. Living Color was right. Hollywood Shuffle, you know what I'm saying, which yeah. is Robert Townsend hit. You know, we was fans of movies like Car Wash. Just right. Them fun movies that yeah. showed, yeah, shit is bad, but we we not crying through it. We're going we gonna to have fun. We're going to laugh. We're going to still live. Right. No, no matter what the conditions, no matter what the circumstances are, we still gonna live. We're not gonna just be victims of our circumstance. You got three Fridays out now, right? Yeah, yeah. We did next Friday, and then Friday, and then Friday after, after next. next. Yeah, which is kind of mixed with a Christmas movie. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of mixed that whole story into this Christmas season. How many movies have you done now? In your I lifetime. Know, I, I Can you count them? I stopped counting. I don't know. Probably over 30, 40. Which is your favorite one? Damn. Um, I, I, I got to say Friday. Friday? Was that yeah. your most fun and most challenging? Definitely the most fun, especially Friday after next. You know, I, had, I ain't had more fun on a movie set than that. Um, and, yeah, it's challenging to keep the vision you know the first movie we did we did uh what's called a negative pickup a negative pickup being the movie company give you all the money they don't mess with you they just say bring us back a movie and after that they wanted to be involved in the script and you know tinker with it and it's like Dude, right Leave me alone, and I'm going to bring you a hit movie that is authentic and not some Hollywood version of it, but it's going to be real. Right, People are right. going to feel it forever. And so that's the fight, is to make sure you can keep all those little real parts that these dudes in Hollywood, they don't understand what the hell. You know, they don't understand the comedy and, and the essence of it. Like when, uh, you know, Regina King is, is sleeping on her hand and, and she, she, you know, she don't want to mess up her hair doing shit. You know, like little stuff like that. Right, right. They wouldn't get. They would want you to cut that out. I don't understand it. But it's like, no, that's the essence. That's right. The, that's what makes this, you know, a, a hit for the ages and not just a hit for this year you know, one time watch. That's what I try to make my movies where you can watch them over and over and over again. And, and, and make it feel like it, every time you watch it, it's still like your first time watching yeah. it. Yeah, see something new and fresh. I'm going to tell you something, my dude. Because uh, you say that, um, and I believe you had a lot of fun doing Fridays. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And not only that, but that's like, your real life first hit hood movie on mm -hmm. your own. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But my favorite one. Yes. All right. I want to live this dream too. Because you proved that you can live a dream. You know what I'm saying? You proved that dreams can be, can come true. There's a movie you did 
I want to be able to live this too. And that's my favorite one that you did. I'm sorry, bro. Triple X. Triple X. Triple yeah. X, bro. Come Triple on, X man. Is fun. Cause see, I'm one of them James Bond yeah, type. Yeah. Of man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like yeah. that James. I like that James Bond type of shit. That action. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know all the while. You, yo, come on, Cube. Yeah, yeah. I Let me tell you something, man. You did first of all, you did a fantastic job on that movie, Thank bro. You. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? And Thank not you. only that, but did you do a lot of your stunts? Yeah, you know, um Cause that was a lot of stunts yeah, was, in that was, movie, yeah. boy. And man. I you know, I used to I used to play football and I would I would wake up from football practice sore. Yeah. You know, or a game, really couldn't get out of bed. Man, after doing that movie, man, like all that running, jumping, fighting, carrying them heavy guns, man, feel like I had a football practice. Damn. You know, you be like, damn. Yo, you got me movie. excited right now, bro. Yeah, I'm man. thinking of this movie and I'm yeah. looking at the parts that you played, man, and I'm like, damn, Cube, you. Damn, he's lucky, man. He get to do that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun. <laughs> I want to do it too. Challenging though, you know. Yeah, the action movies ain't no joke, man. Was a lot of it real dangerous? And, it was a few. Some of it, it was a few hairy. Some of it that you felt like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. Shit. Yeah, you know, they had you me know. climb climb up an anchor chain. Like you know, we in the in this U.S. military uh, aircraft carrier, right? They got the anchor going 40, 50 feet to the water. Right. And they want me to climb up the chain into the into the boat. Into the boat. And, yeah. And, so, and, and to where the chain. Yeah, it lock, to locks into that. the boat. So you let go, you in the water. Right. You know what I mean? You're in right. the San Francisco Bay. So yeah, it's like, man, that kind of stuff was hairy. I'm like, whoa. You know, a couple, couple of times I was like, man, you're going to have to. I got to get the stunt man to finish this one little piece because it's just it's too crazy, man. I feel like, you know, you need a pro. You what made saying? you want to do Triple X? I know Vin Diesel, too. Vin Diesel yeah. is my man. Well, but what me, made you want to do that movie or to recreate it? Well, once that, I heard... That, hey, Ice Cube, everybody, just to let y'all know, the yeah, legendary yeah, yeah. Ice Cube, the best that did it, and got away with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yo, what made, it, what made you want to recreate that? Well, you know, I heard they uh, they wasn't, you know, Vin wasn't going to do the, the next one. Um, so, you know, it was really all about stepping up, you know, stepping up uh, and... You know, just making sure that that I was broadening my audience because I had done, you know, I had done. Are we there yet for the kids? Right. You know are we there yet? Yeah. Did are we there yet for the kids? So um, I was gonna call you today and be like, Yo, Cube, are you here yet? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, man. You yeah, know me. Yeah. I'm always. <laughs> so, you know, I I just wanted to give a crack at it, man, and, and like do my version of it. Make sure the character was something I could get into. So, yeah. You know, it's a, it a good movie, man. Yo, great job. Thank you. Great job on that movie, man. You, you know what I'm you. saying? Now, to this day, when I was in the Bahamas, bro, just looking at you, man. Like, first of all, even before the Bahamas, me coming to one of your first big three league games, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The big three games. And I see you sitting there courtside. And you watching the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all the big three games, I see you sitting courtside. Mm -hmm. That's why I said to you, I said, yo, man, yo, man, you remind me like a Mark Cuban. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. Mark Cuban... He owns the Mavericks, and he's always there watching over his team and watching his team play. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I say you remind me of that is because, Q, this shit ain't small to me, man, what I'm about to say. This shit is huge, bro. Yeah. You're not just sitting there watching the team. You're watching your own league. Yeah. Bro, 
you got a league, man, a whole league. Yeah. I mean, I mean, other people got teams, but they don't own no league. Cube, you created a whole brand. You changed the culture of basketball, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, that was our motto. You know, we want to change the game. Let me tell you something, man. Every, all of the basketball games that we know of today is always five on five, full court. You came with the three on threes, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they you came the with the three on threes. And let me tell you something, bro. You got your own league. I'm bugging out. I'm bugging out right now. Kim, I'm sorry, Kim. I got caught. <laughs> Shout your wife out. Kim, <laughs> yo, that's what your husband does. K I M. He keeps it moving. That's what K I M means. <laughs> your husband owns a league. She do too. I know. Okay. 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 Hey, hey, hey. I'm with that too. I'm yeah. with that too. Congratulations <laughs> on you come up, Kim. <laughs> but yo, man, but but I mean, you own own the league and you got what, about twelve teams? Twelve teams. Um Hall of Fame coaches, you know. Hall of Fame coaches. Dr. J. And, 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 and let me Ice tell man. you something, man. Another thing that you've created, because there's a lot of these brothers that's playing in the big three retired from pro basketball. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these players, some of these players sat on the bench, man. You know what I'm saying? Their entire careers. Yep. Or and was shit. role players and couldn't show right. everything that they could right. do. Right, right. And what you did, my brother, was you gave these guys a chance to be reborn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gave them a chance to be able to fulfill their dreams because all they want to ever do is play. Yep. And the ones that didn't get to play, now they can get to play and they can show off their skills, yep. show what they could do, show what, 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 what those other coaches has been missing and they should have really put them in instead yep. of just having them sit on the bench. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, man. It so puts them back in the arena. Yeah, Look, right. I, I just imagine, you know what I'm saying? Because these dudes, they get, some of them get cut or they find themselves out the league. They 33, 34. Right. Young men. Could Young you guys. imagine if somebody came to you at 34, 35 and was like, all right, Flay. No more shows. You done. Take the mic out your hand. Just you go in the audience, man. You know, but you can't get back up here no more. Could you imagine that? I can't imagine it. I don't want to imagine yeah. it. And if so happens that that <laughs> shit was to happen, hey, you remember this old this old saying? It ain't over till the fat lady sings. That's right. Well, if that fat lady sings one note, I'll shoot that in the head. <laughs> That's <laughs> it ain't over. And it ain't never over till right. you say it's over. Until I, that's Til right. you say it's over. That's and right. And that's how it should the be with these limit, guys. The only limit that you have is the limit that you set for yourself. Yes. Can't nobody yes. else set your limits? No. God can set your limits. Of course. But humanly wise, y'all the only one that can set your limits. Can't nobody else do it. I believe in that. And so to get these guys... They spirit back. Yeah. A they, second life. They not they not TV analysts. Right. They 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 ballers, man. They play. They've been honing their skills since they was little youngsters. Right. And now they men who are very skilled at the game. Right. They, I mean, they know how to play. And so you you put them in a half court setting. And you say, look, you ain't got to play every other day. You just play once a week. But come ready. And 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 you get a great game, you know. And guys right. look like they did when they was in the NBA. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's very fulfilling. 
right. to see these dudes back where they belong. Right. You know, Jerry. And, and, and not only that, but some of these dudes, man, you've been a fan of for years and yeah. shit. And and and, and now they playing for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm it's, sorry. Yeah, Jim. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm just it's happy a beautiful for you, thing, man. man. You know, yeah. I, I'm I'm happy for for everybody involved. You know, it's not just me, but. It's a lot of people that's involved in this league, and right, we we almost we almost at the promised land. You know what I mean? With, right. And once we start rolling downhill, it's really gonna blow. Like, right. You know we're gonna expand. This is gonna be something that if you don't even ever go to the NBA, you can come to the Big Three. To the Big Three and shine. And and you know what? Let me tell you something. This big three thing that you've created, bro, it is growing. It's gaining momentum like a Yes. Bro. It's gaining, I mean, it's gaining crazy momentum. And before you know it, in years to come from now, this is going to be like another NBA. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, man. Let me tell yeah. you something, man. Shit, it's all CBS Sports. Yes. Come on, man. That's huge. You know, we want That's huge. That's what these guys deserve. Yeah. That's what these guys deserve. They deserve major networks, major sponsorship. Right. Major arenas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, when yes. we can get back on the road and, and hit those staple centers and, yes. you know what I mean? Those yes. big arenas where we can fill them up. Yeah. And have, you know, we used to have 10, 11, 12,000 people before right. this COVID shit. So once that's over and the thing, we can go back to that and and go around like a mini all star game. Right. Going from city to city with 100 different players, taking the town over, enjoying ourselves, having big three games, and then doing stuff for the youth because we got the young three. Right. Uh, and we have the youth come out there and play, and they come to the arena and let them come on the court and shoot around. And, you know, we just, right. you know, try to make it. When you got something like this, you know, you just want to invite people to be a part of it. Like, you know, come check out a game. Or, you know, it's, it's a yeah. beautiful thing to be able to do that for underprivileged communities. You know, we give out. You know, 2,500 tickets, man, just to people who can't afford to be there. Right, right. You know? Yo, man, it felt good to, uh, first of all, I mean, like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. It felt good to get to meet Lisa Leslie and yes. take a picture with her, man. That was big to me, bro. Yeah. Even though she's big to me. <laughs> 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 but, but it was big to me to be able to meet her. You know what I'm saying? She was nice, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? People like Dr. J that you just mentioned, Julius yep. Irvin, who's from Roosevelt, Long Island, where I'm from. And I remember back in the days, Q, when my sisters used to um, go to the basketball games, mm -hmm. Roosevelt used to play Freeport. And there was a time I went to a Freeport game against Roosevelt and Dr. J was playing. Wow. So I watched him in high school. Man, ain't that something? Crazy, you ain't know what I'm something? saying? And people, people like my dude, um, um, yo, Rick, yo, Rick, my horn, man. Yeah, Rick. My horn, Rick. <laughs> you know, I had to give Rick my horn a shout out. Yeah. You know, that's my guy, yeah, man. Yeah, man, Rick Mahorn is real yeah. champion, you know. Yeah. Um, he, he was a... Uh, you know, he was a guy who, you know, played that hard nose style. You know, that's what we right. wanted in the league. We want that soft stuff. We can leave that for the NBA. But we wanted, remember how we used to watch him play in that paint. Yeah. You know, they play rough in that paint. So that's the kind of style we want. So people Yo, I, can. I had I had did a uh a rock and chalk basketball game for MTV back yeah. in the days when Rick Mahorn was on my team. We had to play against Dean Kane and his team. Yeah. Because Dean Kane had just did another Superman movie, man. And I ain't going to lie, but this really like Superman. Yeah, the reason Dean why Kane is because play. I was playing on the court with him, Cube, and my knee banged against his. It put me out the game, and he was still in. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, Dean Kane, man. I'll never forget that, man. My boy Charles Oakley. Yes. Oak. Come on, man. Oak. Yo, man, yeah. back in the days. 
back in the days, you know, I got, got my homeboy from Freeport, Long Island. His name is Tim Smith. They went to Virginia Union. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was um, um, Charles Oakley's roommate. I used to stay in Charles Oakley's um, room. Damn. Uh, yeah, 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 in his dorm room. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I got a little bit of history, too. I you see, know what man. You know, you, you probably know, <laughs> you know, 20 more people than me, man. You know, you, you've been around forever. But, but Q, but you gave these guys a platform, man. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to say congratulations to the wonderful life that you live in, bro. You know Thank what you. I'm saying? And the whole nine to all of these wonderful accomplishments that you're making, man. You know what I'm saying? This big three, man, this is going to be another NBA. And this is going to be just as big as NBA. Without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. real. And this is something that you created. I'm, I'm sitting here with a league owner. Not a team owner, a league. Do you hear me, Cube? Yeah. Do you, do you hear me? You yes. own a league. Yeah, man. A whole league. It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, give all the glory to God. Um, you got to come do some voiceovers or some, some work hey, listen, for Q, us, man. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, in front of everybody, and y'all remember I said this to Q, if you ever in life need me for anything, call me. No doubt. I'm right there. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Well, no up, man. I, that, I can promise you that, brother. Yeah, Long I know. As I'm breathing air, Cube. You need me for anything. Call your boy. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate whatever, that. Whatever, whatever you need, Cube. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I just thank you so much, bro, for even coming coming by here. Oh, blessing, man, this just this just blessing part, me, man. This is part one, man. You know we we uh we get it in again, man. Yes. I come back through, and you know we. Y'all heard him. We it's only keep part chopping one. it up, man. It's part one. It's only part yeah, one. Yeah, I come back. There's through. gonna be another one soon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Word up, yo. Before we leave here, Cube, what's Next, now for Ice Cube, what is what you doing right now? I mean, besides Big Three, any more movies? Are you gonna drop any more solo records? Yo, Dub C, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right, G. As much as I talk, but you are the king of the Crip Walk. <laughs> yeah, G, Dub that's my dude. Hey, you yeah. know what? I'm gonna tell you something, man. Dub, I used to, I used to always call, make a mistake and call him Mac Ten. Is that right? Yeah, man. <laughs> and sometimes I used to walk up to him, man, and I call him that shit. I could see the heat in his face, but he's so humble to me, man, and he he takes it. You know what I'm saying? And he lets me roll with it. Then I always come back and be like, yo, yo, Dub, yo, Dub, I'm sorry, G. I, I didn't mean to call you Mac 10. You know? Yeah. You, cause you know me, man. I'm it's all love, mixing man. You up, man. I'm dude, don't worry about nothing, mixed man. Mixed up names and this and that. Don't worry about Dub nothing. C. You know, Dub love you, man. And, yeah, uh, man. I love me it's some much Dub respect. C. I started getting his name right, though. Yeah, it's much respect. <laughs> I started you know, getting Dub it right. Sizzle. Yeah. yeah. The one and only. Yeah, the one and only Dub C, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to shout out my dude. But so, we, uh, you know, we we on the road. You know, we doing shows. Got a few shows this fall. Um, okay. Finishing up a animated movie. Um, we did some voiceover work yesterday on that. You know, I remember I told you I couldn't come through yesterday. Right. Um, and um, and and then from there, you know, we got another movie I'm finishing, just doing some more. Uh, it's not really voiceover work. It's called ADR when you fix when you fix some of the 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 uh, you know audio. You know, you might have been filming and they might have been you know. Right, plane went by. You got to fix little pieces in the audio, so we got to do that. Um, you know, fixing the big three. You know, we got to do like what's what's called a post mortem. You know, what I mean, just kind of look at what we did well last season, what we could do better. Right. You know, just make sure we steady improving. Um, re up a few deals. You know, our TV deals, some of our sponsor deals. Try to get them to re up that uh, and. Man, just keep it moving. Get it, get ready for twenty two. You got a, you got another solo album coming. No, I'm working with this. Uh, I'm working with drop a my, single? My, my, Yeah, I you dropped a drop single. Something. Yeah, I dropped a single um, called "Trying to Maintain." Okay, and, uh, right. And so, but I'm doing a record with Snoop, uh, E Forty, and Too Short called "Mount Westmore." So we doing a whole album. Hey, yo, you know what? I got a cousin, man, named Prozac. 
Yeah, I'm Prozac, gonna, he did some beats yeah, yeah, for us. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah he yeah, did yeah. some beats for yeah, us. Yeah, yo, yo, he's like, yo, cousin, when you see Ice Cube, man, can you tell him that your cousin Prozac yeah. got like three joints up on he the do. Mount Westmore? I they said, crazy. cause I'm all, I automatically know right now Cube is aware of that. Man. Yeah, yeah, you know it's crazy, you know, so tell him to keep sending them. Yeah, keep yeah, sending yeah, those yeah, tracks. he's good, he's good. Yeah, Prozac is dope, and so we finishing that up, you know, hopefully uh, we could drop that this fall. Okay. And then, you know, tour and documentary and just try to, you know, you know we four West Coast legends, so we got to make sure we roll it out right. Uh, yo, you know what we really need to, out of all of these movies that you've been making, bro? And I ain't going to lie, the NWA movie, classic. Thank classic. You. Thank you. We need an Ice Cube documentary. Yeah. We yeah. need to do a documentary on your life, bro. I'm we, doing we, one on mine. We working on it. I'm working on one for yeah, mine. I'm, I'm, I'm working on one. You need to do one on yours. Yeah, it's, it's, boy, it's extensive. You, you, you are a legend. You got stories. You know what I'm saying? And you have been on and still on a fantastic fucking journey. Thank you, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going to let it out. And I'm proud of everything that you've done, everything that you're still doing, and I'm proud of everything that you're about to do. Appreciate that, man. You know what I'm saying? For real. It's Yo. Nice love, Flash. Everybody, this is my guy, the one and only Ice Cube. Oh, yeah. I forgot one more thing. Yeah. Before we leave, is, is there anything you want people to know about Ice Cube, the individual? Let it out. Um... I'm no different than you. You know, I got dreams, and it's all about doing what it takes to make them happen. Um, you can do it. It's really all about recognizing your opportunities. Right. And not, um, and not holding yourself back or harnessing yourself because it's something you've never done. Or something you don't quite understand as it's presented. You know, I, I've always said step towards the opportunity. See what happens. Um, and prepare. And then you can you can reach those goals too. You know, I just want people to know that um, I'm no different than you are, man. You know, like we all come from the same situations. And we can all get through it. No doubt. Yo, check this out. One more thing, too, Ice Cube. I got to present you. With my oh, book that yeah. That's right. I got to present you with that. I appreciate this. I, I hope I, you I sign. Didn't mean, I, don't, I, didn't mean, I don't see no signatures I'm going, in here. I'm okay. going to put a signature going, in yeah, there. I just wanted yeah. to give it to, put appreciate it in your it. hands first. Yes. You know Thank what I'm you. saying? And not only that, Oh, don't worry, Kim. I'm gonna have one for you too. Yeah, I'm gonna get one with you. You got she one. Gonna you got be, one she gonna be. She gonna go through this faster than me. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey you know what? It's an easy read. It's about yeah. three hundred and something pages. My oh, sister Kim said that she started reading it and she couldn't put it down, and she read the whole thing in like about I don't know, maybe six hours. Yeah, that's sweet. Yes, this is great. And, and yeah, also, the amazing thing is when you read these stories. You can hear my voice talking yeah, to you. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, all of the stuff in there is true. Nothing fabricated, nothing blown up, or nothing yeah. like that. Yeah. I, I you know what I'm that. saying? Yeah, I yeah. Everything that, is real in there. So I just have to present you with my book, man. You know what I'm saying? I wrote it about four and a half years ago, whatever. So, don't mind. Sign it for me, man. Oh, I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Me up. Definitely. Me up. Definitely. To my, to my dude, Cube. Hey, listen, man. Just thank you so much, bro, once again. For coming here, man. Anytime. And blessing my studio with your presence, man. This is not small to me. This is this is huge. This is big. And the reason why I'm not signing this right now is because I want to put some shit in here. Yeah, I feel you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Right now, we just signing off. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting ready to sign an Ice Cube book for him just to let y'all know, okay? Yeah, yeah. Word yeah. up, G, but Ice Cube!
Appreciate it. Yay, yay. <laughs> no, thank you, man. Much love. Oh, man. Thank you so much, bro. Anytime. I appreciate you so much, man. Word up, man. Yeah, man, you need me some anything, bro. You blow the whistle, man. You know what I mean? Not a doubt.